To discuss the current political issues, we invited Alexei Sederchuk, an analyst at Ilkop Kucherev Democratic Initiatives Foundation. Nice to meet you. Hi. And uh, first of all, I would like you to comment on the new prime minister. So, uh, would you see that uh, Volodymyr Hoysman will be able to return the trust of Ukrainian citizens to the government? Or should we expect the new strategy of development or of management, or uh, he will be um, uh, in line with uh, the previous strategy? I think uh, the level of trust in the new government uh, is already quite low. Um, uh, well, partly because uh, there's a high level of mistrust to the former prime minister, and partly because of uh, this whole process of uh, the cabinet formation, which was marked by uh, shadow deals, uh, not open to the public, and uh, and this whole process uh, uh, took so long that people are, I think, are now uh, are quite uh, tired of this and they have no uh, high expectations about what the new cabinet uh, they could do. And this is, uh, on the one hand, this is a disadvantage of the new government because uh, they will lack s uh, uh, such high support which uh, the previous government of, of Arsenisnik had uh, during the first months of, of uh, of his tenure, but at the same time there will be no uh, high expectations, so there will be no big disappointments in the new government, I think. And uh, as we see, uh, could notice, there are no foreigners have left in the new cabinet, but as well uh, the few ministers, still old ministers, are still left on their positions, uh, on the key ministries, for example, as internal affairs or ministry of justice. So um, how would, could you comment on such selective appointments? Well, I think basically as it all comes down to the political deals which uh, t which was struck between uh, the, pres uh, the President Poroshenko and, and former Prime Minister Yatsenyuk. So uh, uh, Poroshenko has his um, so-called quote of uh, the ministers and the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Defense was among uh, this, uh, this quote of uh, of the president, and the same, the same thing is about uh, as the minister of justice and as minister of of interior, which is uh, uh, who are uh, very loyal to uh, to Yatsenyuk. So, one of I think one of his conditions uh, to uh, uh, to resign from his from his post voluntarily was uh, uh, to keep these ministers in place. And, uh, and regarding um, the absence of of any foreigners in uh, uh, this new cabinet, I think it's uh, one of the not very promising feature since um, some of these ministers, they were, uh, some call them reformists, but uh, in any case, they, uh, uh, they were uh, quite independent from uh, the political pressure by president or, or by prime minister, and uh, we see that um, uh, the as the new cabinet members, they are, uh, as they won't be uh, so independent, so they will be dependent on their political forces, on some, on some specific people, and I think it could be uh, not, uh, not a good sign that uh, as this cabinet, which uh, will be uh, too political, we saw that uh, as there were many talks about uh, the so-called technocratic uh, government, but. But finally, we see that uh, there are actually one or two technocrats in uh, the classical sense, and then all other people are, are just political uh, political appointments. But Volodymyr Hoysman is uh, said to be a good um, manager, as he was the mayor of Vinnytsia. And uh, so uh, could you see that he will uh, further um, make this uh, reforms, the systemic reforms, these efforts to, to change the government? Uh, Volodymyr Hoysman was uh, a, rather good, uh, a rather good mayor. He had uh, many successful achievements in, in his city, which uh, for some time was an example of uh, 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 of how the reforms could be done on uh, the local level. So he, he has uh, these abilities to, uh, to conduct reform, but on the position of uh, prime minister, it's, uh, it's a totally another scale, it's, uh, it's another level. Uh, so um, we will see if he, if he could manage this 
difficult to retain his, uh, his ability to, uh, 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 to push for reform because uh, the opposition from some from the oligarchy groups and from uh, political parties will be strong and um, we see that Voldemar Groisman uh, uh, during the last uh, uh, two years was uh, um, he demonstrated that he he's also dependent on uh, as the president Poroshenko and it could be um, one of the biggest obstacles of uh, as it could prevent him from uh, uh, from engaging in um, in a high quality process of uh, of reforms. Uh, so, uh, if he could uh, 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 somehow distance himself from the influence from the Porosh uh, from the President Poroshenko and uh, from other groups, uh, well, potentially he could be uh, a reformist prime minister. But uh, he is already included in this whole uh, political system and then they fear he will just um, as they're saying in snook he um, he could success in some uh, uh, separate uh, separate spheres of reforms but uh, um, there will be no uh, uh, no systemic reform thank you now let's continue with uh, our discussion on other events of the current week so security service of Ukraine have found four paintings of 17th and 18th centuries stolen from the West Fries Museum of the city of Horn in the Netherlands in 2005. That was stated by the head of security service of Ukraine, Vasil Hrytsak, at the joint briefing with the ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Ukraine, Kies Klompenhauer. As reported, the artworks were found during the week before the referendum in the Netherlands on the EU-Ukraine Association. And according to Vasil Hrytsak, the disclosure of this information might affect the election results, but the operation could be disrupted. The two other paintings Security Service of Ukraine found exactly on the day of the briefing. The search operation is set to be continued. Let me recall that in January 2005 from the Dutch Museum were stolen 24 paintings and about 40 silver antiques. The estimated cost of the collection is about 10 million euros. I would like to mention that from the very beginning we were working in hard conditions concerning that everyone knew that on April 6 in the Netherlands would be a referendum. And let's say that missed paintings which were stolen in the Netherlands and probably disappeared on the territory of Ukraine, this card was played by many persons from political cycles of different countries, including Russians. And uh, I would like to, uh, to congratulate you with this leadership, with this uh, step forward um, in the investigation, with this concrete result. Thank you very much. And as it was reported on 12th of April in the Netherlands, officially announced the results of referendum on the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement. About 60% of participants voted against and 38% voted for. Every third Dutch citizen came to vote. The government of the Netherlands promised to announce the results of the voting by the end of June, as they will wait for the results of the EU membership referendum, which is going to take place on 23rd of June in the United Kingdom. About that told Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte in the Parliament. Moreover, already this month's European Commission will suggest the European Union to abolish visas for Ukraine, despite the negative outcome of the referendum in the Netherlands, the Reuters reported. The proposal must be approved by the qualified majority of EU member states and the European Parliament. According to the news agency, the Commission will create certain guarantees and set a condition which allows countries to renew visas in case of a surge of migration. Earlier, it was reported the European deputies said that the decision on EU-Ukraine Association should be decided by all the European Union, but not by all only 20% of the one country. So uh, let's discuss this issue as we see that uh, Ukraine now in her, its um, efforts to achieve the visa-free regime with the European Union is stuck uh, in, uh, with problems that are within the European Union. For example, the Dutch parliament uh, waits for the referendum in, which is going to take place in Great Britain. How could you see uh, we, uh, what are the prospects of this process for Ukraine right now? Well, I, um, I should stress that uh, the, uh, uh, the Dutch referendum and visa liberalization uh, 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 regime is uh, a separate issue, although uh, uh, how many in the Netherlands uh, they uh, voted against this uh, association agreement uh, because they feared that uh, uh, many Ukrainian, Ukrainian uh, 
migrants will uh, will come to the Netherlands. But at the same time, the the referendum was dedicated to the association agreement, and visa free regime is uh, is another story. So. Um, as we see, as the European Union already agreed, uh, and formally at least, uh, to, uh, uh, to the visa free regime for Ukraine, and um, they, uh, uh, they deliberately uh, waited till the end of the referendum in order not to, uh, not to insert more, uh, or more controversy for uh, as a voters in the Dutch referendum, so they waited until the referendum is over, and then uh, they will uh, they will propose uh, uh, a proposition to, uh, uh, to abolish visas for Ukraine, and I think uh, there will be no problem with that. Uh, uh, so, should we expect the visa liberalization is ready to come in 2016? I think yes, because uh, because Ukraine has accomplished all of uh, the main requirements, and there is also a political will uh, on the side of European Union and many of the uh, European uh, Union decision makers. Uh, decision makers is also think that uh, the EU should somehow compensate uh, Ukraine for this negative result in the Dutch referendum, uh, because it was uh, really. Not Ukraine's fault, and so um, a visa-free regime would be uh, some kind of um, some kind of benefit for Ukraine, the compensation for this negative result. But uh, this uh, decision has been made already before the referendum, and will and it will uh, it won't change. So we can see uh, that as uh, a visa-free regime could enter into force at the end of uh, uh, the summer. Uh, but still, the association agreement, uh, its future is uh, already threatened by this uh, case, by the referendum and, and so on and so forth. So would you say that uh, Ukrainian authorities, newly elected cabinet, uh, will manage to push the um, authorities of uh, Netherlands or to ratify this? Uh, I think that uh, the Ukrainian government could do uh, uh, virtually nothing about this uh, because it's uh, the internal issue of the European Union. And then as I see it, um, I think that uh, the solution will be found. And the solution could be that uh, the Netherlands will opt out of uh, some of the norms, some of the chapters of the association agreement. But uh, the agreement will, uh, will remain in place. And so and the Dutch government will say that um, we won't um, um, uh, we will opt out of the several features of, of the agreement, and this will be a compromise with the Dutch voters and with the European Union. And, but I think, on, uh, on the whole, uh, the Netherlands couldn't, uh, uh, um, they just couldn't uh, 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 break down this process because, uh, because many of the norms of the association agreement, it is. And they are not in the competence of uh, the national governments. It is uh, as they are in the competence of the European Union. So, as the main as the main base of the agreement will will remain, and uh, there will be some uh, some compromises with on the Dutch side. But I think we have uh, we have nothing to really worry about it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And uh, today we had a discussion with Alexis Siderchuk, an analyst at Ilko Kucherev Democratic Initiatives Foundation.